Now we're going to start the full procedure for doing a ZNT test. There are four steps. We're going to talk about just the first one in this video. So if we look at some examples, um, or let's talk about you know, what the step is going to be like first. Uh, we're talking about what's being tested and how will it be tested. So you want to briefly state in words a question needing to be answered uh, and identify and verify the test that would be, be performed. Now we did that in an earlier uh, video from sampling distributions. Now let's look at some examples. We have uh, Prevnar, that is a, it's a vaccine. The question is, uh, is there sufficient convincing evidence that more, more than 15% of all children that take Prevnar will have a loss of appetite as a side effect? So first of all, more will probably mean one tail. We have uh, a sample of 710 children. Uh, it looks like we only have one sample, so these are all clues to pick up on. If we look up over here, Example B, we have uh, Dr. Salk, who in 1955 uh, worked on the polio vaccine. We have 400,000 children broken up into two groups. So it looks like we're probably talking about uh, two sample. Uh, and is there sufficient evidence to say that receiving the vaccine lowers the chance of getting polio? So again, seems like we're probably looking at a one tail. Oops, going forward. So, the first thing, step one. When you, when you are given a Z or T test, a test of significance question, you need to write down all four steps. So on your paper, I want to see step one. Right. And what you're going to do is paraphrase. Right, there's a lot of information given in the full question. Really, what it comes down to is, well, at least 50% of the children who take Prevnar experience a loss of appetite, you know, the at least. So this is 15 or more. Is, is there going to be more? Um, in question two, does taking Dr. Salk's vaccine reduce the chance of getting polio? Right, so that's really the question. Now, the next part is to uh, identify what tests you're going to do. We have a one tail, one sample, Z test for proportions. We're going to verify that we can do this test. There are three checks. Is it a simple random sample? Uh, we're told that they are randomly selected, so I, we can check that one off. Uh, these calculations are for the second check. All right, we have our sample proportion which is 17% uh, of the sample, uh, you know, experienced uh, loss of appetite. We're seeing is that significantly different than 15%. Uh, we do our n times p and our n times 1 minus p check. They are both greater than 10, so that checks out. Uh, and then finally we have is the population 10 times bigger than the sample. And it seems like the population of children should probably be bigger than 7,100. So we have uh, it all checked out. Uh, and that's step one for example A. For example B, we have a one tail, two sample, as we said, because you know, one sample is given placebo. The other sample is given the actual vaccine. Uh, and we're looking at the proportions how many uh, actually got polio. So we have a, we're told that it was a randomly divided group. Uh, now we're going to actually use the pooled uh, proportion. And we're doing that because we always start with saying there is no significant difference. So if there's no significant difference between placebo and vaccine, then really it's the same proportions and we can pool them. Uh, and we can do our you know, checks right, of greater than 10. Looks like they are both greater than 10. Uh, 10 times the sample size. 
Well, and these are big samples. Ten times would be two million. Uh, are there, at, in 1955, were there two million children? Yeah, probably. Um, we have to maybe check. Maybe so. That's why I, I put the proceed with caution. Uh, we probably just want to check on the population at the time, but doesn't seem too unreasonable. Uh, and so, this test is verified, uh, and that's going to be uh, step one of the process.